Hey, welcome back. Uh, so, last video we went through puzzle one for day one of the advent of code. Uh, today I'm going to take a look and do part two based on part one. Uh, so, the idea with part one is that we've got a series of instructions that are represented by open and closed parens. And an open paren means we go up a floor, and a closed paren means we go down a floor. Uh, once we solve that part, then part two opens up, and we have the same set of instructions, but the job uh, we have now is to find which uh, instruction or which position uh, is the first character that causes us to go into the basement. So in other words, floor uh, negative one. So uh, we're going to be doing this using TDD with PHP spec and uh, I'm going to, I guess, probably over-engineer this just a bit. Um, you know, we're, we've already over-engineered it quite a lot, but uh, I think it helps with uh, kind of understanding uh, PHP spec and how we can do some TDD uh, in PHP with that. So let's get going. So uh, this is our elevator from day one. Uh, and in order for us to know what uh, instruction we're on, uh, I want to make a modification to the instruction parser. I want to have it keep track of how many uh, instructions it has parsed. So we're going to open up instruction parser spec and add some new functionality. So We'll do uh, public function, uh, it can, or let's do it will track how many instructions it has seen. And we're going to go and say, um, let's say this uh, parse instructions. And we'll give one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten or so uh, instructions. Um, and we need to pass in, uh, or we need to tell it that we can get back uh, a value, right? So we're going to add a new method to it. So we'll say this get instruction count, and it should be 10. So if we run PHP spec, it should offer to give us that new method. We'll create it, and it fails because we got a null. Uh, so we're going to go into the instruction parser, and here's our new instruction count. Uh, I'm going to add a variable here to store it. And I need my dollar sign there. All right, and our get instruction count, we're just going to say, let's go ahead and return this instruction count. Uh, if we run it right now, of course, that fails. Um, but we can add one more test uh, that will pass, uh, or, or that we want to pass also. And we want to make sure that when we build a new instruction parser that it has counted zero instructions. So uh, instructions. All right. so. This one's pretty simple. We do this get instructions uh, count, and it should be zero. So we've now got two tests and two failing tests. So we need to make uh, this first one pass. We'll do instruction parser. If we initialize instruction count to zero, that should make our zero one pass, and it does. Uh, now the next thing we need to do is we need to increment our instruction count whenever we find an instruction that matters. So when we do a go up or a go down. Uh, so we'll do um, this instruction count plus plus and duplicate that line there. And now when we run it, uh, I must have miscounted my parentheses. Let's look back at the spec. Yeah, I've got one too many. Now it's passing, everything's happy. So our instruction counter will now, our instruction parser will now count instructions. So uh, this is the part that I'm talking about where I want to go and over engineer it just a bit. So in the SPL, which stands for the standard PHP library, there's a couple of interfaces, uh, one of which is called SPL subject. And it is a, uh, an object that we can pass other objects into it. They can attach themselves and say, hey, whenever you do something interesting, let me know. So we want the elevator to tell other objects, 
uh, hey, I did something interesting, I went up or I went down or whatever, and so they can do something, and the elevator doesn't have to know what that is. So back on the elevator spec, uh, we want to make sure that our elevator uh, implements the SPL observer. So we do that like this, or not SPL observer, SPL subject rather. And we say this should have type SPL subject, and I'm going to let uh, PHP Storm figure out the name of it. Go back here, have it suggest something. There we go, SPL subject class. So when I run it, it'll say, hey, I got an elevator, but I expected an SPL subject. So if we go on elevator and implement SPL subject, it's complaining. We get these squiggly lines that say, hey, you've got to either make this an abstract class or you've got to do, uh, declare these methods. So I'm going to make stubs, and it automatically adds in attach, detach, and notify. Um, so attach and detach are uh, pretty simple. Uh, they're going to allow something that implements SPL Observer to be passed in, and the elevator is actually going to store those so it can uh, reference them later. So we're going to give it somewhere to store objects. So we'll, uh, we'll call these uh, observers. And I'm going to make a constructor. And the observers, uh, instead of injecting it, uh, normally I would inject it, but in this case uh, I'm not going to. Uh, we're going to use an SPL object storage which uh, has some nice API for allowing us to store different objects. And then on the attach, we will uh, use the objects, the observers, and attach the observer that was passed in. And for detaching, it's almost the same thing. We do this observers detach observer so this is if you're done listening to all the cool things that may happen uh, it allows you to stop listening so now the next part uh, and this is the interesting part but we want to do this with test driven development we've got notify and notify is called uh, and notify will be called whenever we do something interesting so it's going to tell all of the objects that have registered hey this elevator has done something interesting so let's uh, Let's do some more spec for that. So uh, we'll say um, it. We'll, we'll say it can attach. We'll do this one real quick. Uh, I don't have a real good idea on how to actually test that this thing works. Uh, if you do, please uh, leave a comment or contact me on Twitter or something because uh, I'd, I'd really like to know what would be a good thing we can do. But uh, we're going to attach an SPL observer. And we're going to have it create a, a test double for that. So we'll say SPL observer observer. And all I'm going to do is this attach observer. I don't have any tests on this. Um, so other than the fact that this would fail if it didn't exist, I'm not really doing a whole lot with it. Um, and then now I'm going to do uh, it can detach. And we'll do an SPL observer again. Uh, and this time I want it to attach it and then detach it. Uh, and again, I don't have any real tests on this. Um, I'm assuming that everything is working fine because it's a one line bit of code. Um, but if you have a good idea of how to do this in a nice way, uh, I would appreciate you letting me know. So uh, those run, everything's fine. Uh, now we need to make sure that it actually notifies the uh, the observer right so we'll do uh, it will notify uh, observer on go up and we're going to pass in the observer and we need to attach it and we want uh, the observer uh, should get uh, um, it should have a call in there, right? The observer has one call that we need to implement and uh, we're going to give it some behavior right now. So we'll say observer 
update should be called and it should get the elevator, right? So we're in the elevator spec, so this is referring to the elevator. And we want to do this go up. So we're calling go up. We want go up to call notify. Notify is going to update uh, everything. Uh, and then we'll do the same kind of thing for go down. So I'm going to copy paste this guy. And we'll say on go down and go down. So what we want to make sure is that our, our observer gets called. Right? So if I run this, uh, it says it did its stuff, but oh, you know what? I never never said uh, that it should be called. So we need to actually give it some reason to be called or something to check on. So should be called and update should be called. Now we should get two fails. And we do because uh, it says, hey, you were supposed to call this method uh, at least one time, but it never got called. So now on our elevator, we've got notify. And we want notify to loop over uh, our objects. So for each of this observers as observer. And we want it to call uh, observer. And we'll type hint this so it'll give us a nice little auto complete. So these are SPL subject. And now it says, no, nope, no, it's not subject, it's uh, observer. Because it's right there, and it's telling me. So SPL observer, we call update, and it should be called passing in this, which is our elevator. Uh, if I run this again, it still is failing because I'm not actually calling notify. I need to call notify. So on go up, we're going to do this notify. And on go down, we're going to call this notify. We'll run our tests. Everything passes. So now uh, we have an elevator that's going to notify external objects about the fact that it has been told to go up or down and then those other objects can do something with that information. Uh, in our case it's going to uh, figure out what floor it's on. So now we need to build some sort of an observer class. So we're going to do PHP spec describe day one um, and we'll call it, uh, we'll say floor observer and we'll run and it says let's create it and we say yes please create this for us this is one of the things I really like about PHP spec is that it uh, it takes a little bit of the tediousness out of the TDD side of things the creating of new classes or, or the hey if I create a class um, that doesn't you know if I if I want to test for a class and it doesn't exist I get you know none of the type hints I get a, a if, if I'm running a PHP unit I get a huge explosion of, of of fail times where uh, everything bombs because the class doesn't exist and it tried to load this thing, right? So we've got our SPL or our floor observer, but it's not yet an SPL observer, so we need to make it an SPL observer. So add a new function, say it should be uh, an observer, and this should have type SPL observer. And we'll go back and make sure we get the right one. We do, it's at the root. Uh, we run it, it says fail, you're not an observer. So we'll go back to the floor observer and we'll say implement uh, SPL observer. And we'll say give me some method stubs. And the only one we have is update, which is going to be sent in the SPL subject that we're observing. Um, and everybody's happy. So we run it, it's all good. Uh, but we want to uh, make sure that this thing does something good, right? Uh, we want it to keep track of. Uh, we want it to keep track of a couple things. So we want it to, uh, whenever it's called, uh, it's called because the elevator went up or down, and we want it to ask the instruction parser, "Hey, what what instruction are you on?" Um, and then uh, keep track of whenever it's on the floor that we care about, right? So let's uh, let's inject the instruction parser into this thing. So we'll go back into the floor observer, and we'll say uh, let, and the instruction parser 
will be passed in. I'll say this be constructed with parser. So it's going to tell us, hey, you need to pass this in. We'll get a constructor built for you. And then I'm going to go back in and change the constructor so it has to be an instruction parser. And parser. And then tell PHP Storm to go ahead and initialize that field. So it created that pi uh, private variable for me. And now I have a parser injected in. Um, the other things we could do is make it configurable based on what floor we care about. Uh, for right now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hard code it. Uh, you're welcome to do a little bit more PHP spec and say, hey, I want to be able to inject what floor we care about. Um, but uh, yeah. So we want now we've got the instruction parser is parsed in, or passed in rather. Uh, we want to have update do something with the subject. The subject is going to be our elevator. So on our observer spec, we'll say um, it should uh, it, it should ask our parser what what instruction it's on whenever it's called. So we'll do public it should get floor when update is, or not floor, it should get instruction count when update is called. And we need to give some behavior to our instruction parser. And we'll pass that in. All right, so the behavior we want is uh, we just want to make sure that it gets called. That's that's all we care about right now. So instruction parser get instruction count should be called, and we'll do this update, and we need to pass in uh, an SPL subject. Uh, so let's pass it into our function so it can we can pass it in. So uh, SPL subject. And this is going to stand in place of our elevator. So I'm going to call it elevator anyway. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and just make it an elevator. How about that? Let's say it's an actual elevator. And we're going to call update with elevator. And get instruction count should be called. Uh, we'll run it. And it's like, nope, it was not called. It was expected at least once. We're going to go back to the floor observer. And we'll say... Uh, the subject, again, this is going to be our elevator, uh, and I'm going to change this variable just uh, so we remember, but uh, it's, it's really anything that is an SPL subject, so we need to kind of check and make sure that it's an actual elevator. So if elevator instance of elevator, uh, then we know it's something we actually care about. If it's something other than that, some other SPL subject passed in, we don't care about it. We only care about elevators in this uh, example. So we now got elevator, and uh, if if it's an elevator, then we want to uh, get our floor. So we'll say this floor, or this not floor again. I keep doing that. Uh, instruction count equals this uh, parser get instruction count. Uh, let's run it and see how that works. All right, get instruction count was expected. Uh, let's see if this is messing us up. I'm going to get rid of the if and run it again. It is not running. All right, let's take a look. We've got instruction, get instruction count should be called on update. We're calling update. And get instruction. Oh, I bet I called it something different. Uh, instruction parser and up here I called it parser. So this is one of the things that you want to be aware of in PHP spec. Uh, if your type hint and your variable name are the same, then it will be the same thing. Otherwise it's a totally different one. So since I had called it instruction parser previously and up in let, the one that I was injecting was just called parser, uh, I was getting two different objects. So I was calling it on one thing, but I wasn't uh, calling it on the one that I wanted. So now it's the same one that we injected in and now it passes, which is good. Uh, and I bet you I can put back uh, my if block. 
and run it again and it's still passing so that's good so now we've got an instruction count uh, and we want to add some more behavior right so our four observer spec um, will keep track of let's say it's going to keep track of um, any instruction count where uh, where we get to floor negative one, right? So we'll do it should record instruction count if floor is minus one. Okay. So we've now got our parser. Uh, we'll say let's get a random. Uh, instruction count, so we'll say parser, uh, let's say count, is a random number between 1 and 10,000, right? So there's no way uh, that we could fake this with a, a simple return type. And we're going to say, all right, parser, parser, I don't have the parser yet, I need to pass it in. So instruction parser, parser, 1s, so parser, get instruction count, we'll return, and now this time I'm giving it some behavior, right? I'm saying whenever it gets called, it's gonna return this random number. Um, and the elevator that's passed in, so we need to pass that one in too. We'll say elevator, elevator. I'm gonna make it the same one that we get passed in all the time. Uh, elevator, get floor, will return negative one. Now we're gonna call update pass in the elevator. So say this update elevator. Uh, and that should cause the parser to be called, get the instruction count, the elevator, the floor, all that stuff. And then we wanna be able to get that back out. Uh, so we'll say this get instruction should be whatever count was, right? Um, so this is a, a good start, but what happens if we go back up again and then we come back down? Um, we're gonna wanna put another test in here in just a second to make sure that uh, we're getting just the first time that we were in the basement. So I'll run it, it says we need get instruction. Um, you know what, I'm gonna hit no. I'm gonna say get instruction number and change that and we'll run it again, create the inst get instruction number. And now I need to go build that thing. So I've got get instruction number uh, and instruction count is that, uh, but we only care about instruction count if the floor is negative one, right? So we'll say if elevator get floor is negative one, then we're gonna do some stuff. So we'll say this instruction count, uh, we'll call it an instruction number just to be consistent, is equal to the parser's get instruction count. And since I didn't declare that variable, I want to declare it now. So we'll add that field. And we've added a new instruction number up there to hold on to that. And we'll do this get uh, this instruction number, we need to return that, need a semicolon, we'll run that, and we get one instruction count call. Um, so this is one where I've changed a little bit of how it works, right? So this is a potential regression. In this case, we're, we're building this as we go along, but I'm now only calling the instruction number if the floor is negative one. I'm not going to ask it unless the floor is negative one. So I need to change my previous test, right? I need to, um, if I want to make sure this get instruction is called, uh, which in this case, maybe I don't, we'll say, hey, uh, we'll do elevator, let's see, we call it, it should get instruction count when update is called, uh, but that's not totally accurate anymore, right? When update is called, and floor is negative one, but we already really have that, right? So let's let's change this a bit. We'll say it 
should not get instruction count when update is called and floor is not minus one. Okay, so now uh, we're going to have our elevator is going to return some value and we'll give it a nice uh, you know, bunch of random values, but none of those are possibly going to be negative one. So, um, whenever it calls the elevator, it gets some other value that's uh, not in the basement and definitely not negative one. Uh, and instead of instruction count being called, we just change this to should not be called, and we'll run it again. And a fatal error occurred. should not be called. Let's try that again. There we go. So it made sure that the get instruction count was not called. Uh, we got some other value. Everything is looking uh, pretty good so far. So let's take a look at our floor observer. We've got an update that says if we have an elevator and the elevator's floor is negative one, then we're going to store the instruction number uh, that we got out of the parser and we get back the instruction number out of the parser there. Uh, so the problem is going to come about if we go into the basement more than once and we want to make sure that that floor observer uh, will only update that instruction uh, one time. So let's, uh, it should store only the first instruction for basement entry or something, right? Uh, and we're going to pass in the instruction parser and the elevator elevator alright and we need to do a couple of things so uh, first of all we need to get our first count and our first count is going to be again we'll just pick a random number and we'll say the parser will return that. Uh, so get instruction count will return that random count. Uh, and then elevator get floor will return negative one. All right. So uh, when we call update right now, we should get back whatever that random number is. Right same test as we have before uh, really no different and we'll test that we'll say this get instruction number should let's make that a call should be count right and I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna put it down below because I'm gonna need it in a second now I'm gonna have um, the uh, the parser now returns something else, right? I'm going to say uh, now when it gets called, get instruction count will return. Uh, and let's say uh, just to make sure it will never somehow randomly give us back that same value, I'm going to do, you know, count times two or whatever. I just want to make sure it's some other value than, uh, than the one we got. Otherwise, uh, our test is going to be really hard to know if it's actually working uh, or not. So this will never come back with the same value. We've got one to 10,000. We're multiplying that value by two on the next time we get the instruction count. So the second time we're going to the elevator, it's, it's once we've passed twice as many instructions. Um, but if we run it right now, uh, it works. Why does it work? So get floor will return negative one. We update, oh, because I need to call update again. So now we'll call update. And this is the elevator saying, hey, I've been told to move some amount, and now I've moved, and you should do something interesting. So now we get a failure, right? So instead of our original, which was 5,681, uh, we got double that, right? So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, and in order to do that, what we can do is we can say, this instruction number is equal to uh, the parser get instruction count, but we only want to set that if we don't already have something else in there, right? So uh, we can do if again, and, and here we're getting pretty pretty nested in here. But the nice part is we can refactor this all later. So we've got if uh, 
not is set uh, this and say not is set it's not is null if, if if it's not null so not is null this instruction number so if it's not null then we'll set it now this may change our behavior a little bit more because I'm only going to call get instruction count if that's not null. Uh, so we've now failed two tests. So we got it should record instruction count if floor is minus one. That one failed. Um, sorry, if it is null, if it is null. See, this is a nice part. We've got regression test checking here, right? Uh, so now everything passes. I've got my observer. Uh, injected with the instruction parser right up here so it can ask the parser what instruction it was on the observer will store the instruction count uh, for the first time when the desired floor is hit and we can get back the stored instruction count for the first time it was hit uh, so now we need to build uh, puzzle 2 uh, the, the runner bit right so we'll do PHP spec Describe day one, puzzle two. I gotta spell PHP spec right. And we'll do PHP spec run. And we wanna create it. And let's go find it. There we are. So, puzzle two, right? Uh, we wanna make our invoke. And we need a couple of things. So, first of all, we need an elevator. I'll make a new one. We need a parser, and that's a new instruction parser, and it takes an elevator. Uh, next, we need our observer, and that's a new uh, floor observer, and it takes the parser. So now we need to tell the observer to pay attention to the elevator, or tell the elevator, hey, I'm paying attention, let me know when you do something interesting. So we're going to attach the observer to the elevator. So now we've got all of these things wired up, right? We've got an elevator that can go up and down. We've got a parser that gets instructions and tells the elevator to go up and down. We've got an observer that can ask the instruction parser where uh, it is in the stream of characters and it is paying attention to the elevator. So the elevator is going to tell the observer uh, all this thing. So we now need our input. So our input is a file get contents call and we want to go dir and we want to go up two directories and there's our input all right and we're going to tell it to parse parser do your parsing right uh, parse the input, uh, and then uh, rather than output uh, anything from the elevator, we want the observer to give us an answer, right? So, echo, uh, we went into the basement at instruction, and we get our observer, get instruction number. Get some new lines so it shows up okay. And we'll try running it. Fingers crossed. Day one, puzzle two. And the first time in the basement was instruction 1796. Uh, so let's look back at the website and 1797. So I have, uh, I've got an off by one error in here. Let's see what it is. So if I go to my floor observer, we get the instruction count. Uh, let's see, let's go to the parser. Instruction parser. We have, oh, you know what? Here's our problem, right? So I'm telling it, count the instruction after you told the elevator to move, right? We need to go and tell the instruction uh, counter that it goes up before we make the elevator move uh, because that's the instruction count that we're going to get back out in the observer. So if I run it again, I get 1797.
uh, which was the correct number for my puzzle. So that's how we do uh, PHP spec for test-driven development with uh, day one, puzzle two, or part two uh, of the 2015 advent of code. Um, and that's all I've got. Thank you very much, and uh, hopefully I'll get uh, day two posted here pretty soon. Thanks. Bye.